Hi friends, videos under the heading Stealing from China are quite popular. Therefore, today there will be another video in which we will steal again and on a larger scale. Let me remind you that these are introductory videos in which we consider the principle of operation of a particular design that is sold on Chinese online shops. Also, we copy or create both the circuit and the printed circuit board so that everyone can repeat the device. Today, I will probably do some of you a big favor by completely copying an industrial voltage converter 12 to 220 volt 50 hertz with a pseudo sinus wave at the output. On the internet, you can find circuits for such inverters, but I warn you that many of them have errors and will not work. I was convinced of this more than once. Errors often located in the pseudo sine wave formation node and protection circuits. The test sample was purchased for $23. The declared power is 500 watts, but in reality, it certainly will not give out so much. It has protection against short circuits at the output, protection for overheating, protection against low voltage and over voltage in the output, and protection against reverse polarity of the power supply. Also, available sound and light indication when protection worked. The output voltage is variable, stabilized 220 volts, 50 hertz. In short, full-fledged 12 to 220 car converter. The shape of the output voltage is a square wave, that is, it isn't a sinusoid. Such inverters are cheaper than pure sine inverters, but it isn't recommended to connect loads with an asynchronous electric motors and iron 50 Hz transformers. Although they will work, they will heat up, so in general it is better not to connect. All other consumers, including all sorts of power adapters, light bulbs of all kinds, soldering iron, switching power suppliers, etc., work perfectly from such an inverter. Device has active cooling in the form of a 12 volt fan, power terminals, and a fuse. On the other side, there is a 220 volt output, a switch that starts the converter, a pair of LEDs, green operating mode, and red protection. There is also a USB output for charging all kinds of gadgets. The efficiency of the inverter is high due to the all pulse conversion circuit. Such inverters consist of two parts. An initial converter makes from 12 volts a constant high voltage. Then a bridge on high voltage transistors makes an alternating voltage of 220 volts, 50 hertz from a constant voltage. There are hundreds of schematic solutions for such inverters. This version is the simplest and most popular, built on two TL494PWM controllers, but we will talk about the circuit later. Today, our sample will be completely disassembled and copied. Then we will create a printed circuit board and based on it, we will draw a diagram. Next, we will order the board at the factory from our partner's PCB way and assemble the same inverter with our own hands. In short, reverse engineering. The goal is to help those who want to assemble the inverter with their own hands. Don't suffer with the search for circuits and boards, but simply take the finished archive and repeat the design. Everything is simple. Someone will say that this is a theft, but in my defense, I will say that these inverters are produced by hundreds of little-known Chinese companies, only different nameplates and boards. Moreover, these circuits weren't developed by the Chinese, but were known long before China became the world's mega factory. Plus, I'm sharing with you for free, and I'm not going to mass produce them. It's all for the video, so I hope I'm forgiven. But just in case, I will erase the trademark. You never know. So, re-engineering begins. At the very beginning, I thoroughly tested the inverter and took all the main characteristics. With an input voltage of 12 volts, the ideal current is about 320 milliamps, which in my opinion is a little too much for such an inverter, but it isn't critical. Low voltage protection test, a small load lamp is connected to the inverter output. Protection worked at input voltage of 9.5 to 9.6 volts. Over voltage protection test, protection operation voltage is about 16 volts. It's important to note that the protection doesn't work according to the latch principle. 
If the low voltage increases, the inverter will restart itself. On the one hand, this is even a plus. You don't need to manually turn off and then turn on each time to remove it from protection. Let's close short the inverter output to check the short circuit protection. As you can see, the protection works properly. Checking the output characteristics. The output voltage is 220 volts. It floats a little when the input voltage changes, but again, not critical. The frequency of the output voltage is about 50 Hz. The output waveform is rectangular. There is a dead time. This is a pause when all the transistors of the bridge that form the pseudo sinusoid are closed. Checking power output and efficiency. We will do all this in real time. We measure the output power, the inverter fats from the battery. This multimeter will show input voltage and the other will show the output. The current clamp will show the inverter output current. Knowing the current and voltage, we calculate the output power, as the load will be such resistors. We start the inverter. The current is 1.23 ampere and the voltage is about 190. It turns out about 240 to 250 watts of output power. The inverter is unable to give more. You can see that the output voltage drops even at this power and quite noticeably. I added some load and started the inverter. It periodically goes into protection, that is, overload at the output. The voltage appears for a moment and then disappears. Now the output data is known. Let's measure the input parameters to find out the efficiency. The clamp now displays constant input current. The multimeter shows the voltage directly at the terminal. We started with the same load. We have about 11 volt and 26 amps at the input. The efficiency is now on your screens. Step 2 photo session. For a while, our inverter will turn into a photo model. At this step, high-quality photographs of all nodes and components are taken. After the photo session, all components with pins was dismantled, and the board was placed in the scanner and scanned from both sides. As a result, we get a detailed photo which shows the location of all components and their markings. Step 3. Complete dismantling. At this stage, each SMD component is manually dismounted. This can be done both with a hot air soldering station and with a soldering iron. Here we need a multimeter, a transistor tester, and a capacitance meter. SMD capacitors have no marking, so they need to be carefully unsoldered. Measure the capacitance and sign it on a previously printed photo of the board. SMD transistors can be identified by their labeling and technical documentation can be found on the Internet. The stabilization voltage of the Xenier diodes is also checked. In general, at this stage, it is important not to miss anything or confuse anything. All components are removed and are in a separate box. In general, it is advisable to sort them. This will save time if you are going to reuse them like me. At the end of this process, we get a bare board. The board, as you can see, is double-sided. It complicates copying, but we will overcome it. Step 4. We re-scan the board and dissolve the solder mask. In principle, you can skip the scan at this step, but it is desirable. This scan can be used as a layout template. It will be needed when we create a board in the program. Now we dissolve the solder mask. In this particular case, we can escape this process because the solder mask doesn't interfere with seeing the tracks well. But often the mask is green or blue. The pads under such a mask aren't very clearly visible. Besides, silk screening can interfere. Therefore, we throw the board into a special solution and after 10 to 15 minutes, we take it out, rinse it thoroughly and get a completely bare board. Step 5. Final scan, creating a new board. 
We scan the board from both sides. Next, we load one side of the scan on which all the components are located into the program for creating boards. In my case, this is the well-known Sprint Layout version 6. After that, we set the exact dimensions based on the dimensions of the original board or according to the component templates and begin work. Five to six hours of work and the first side is ready. Now we do the same thing with the other side of the board, combining it with the first if necessary. At this step, we pay special attention to metalized holes. After all these manipulations, we can add something to the board from ourselves. For example, the SMD capacitor values and so on. Step 6. Thorough board check. We check all dubious circuits and connections with the multimeter, compare all values with our photos in general. We do everything to exclude possible errors. Step 7. We generate Gerber files. This is required for ordering boards from the factory. Next, we save everything in a separate folder, create an archive of Gerber files, upload this archive to the PCBWay website, select the color and the solder mask, the one you like, pay for the order, and that's all. I chose courier delivery. It is more expensive, but I can't wait to check the board. Advertising is relevant, so don't we complain? We will find a link to the PCBWay website in the description.